Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Mara Thompson. Clouds and some rain showers across northern Michigan today. But for a look at the forecast, we'll turn things over to 7 and 4 Storm Team Meteorologist Joe Charlevoix. Hey Joe. New tonight at 6, a Benzie County father is behind bars tonight charged with seven counts of criminal sexual conduct. And the shooting took place before the dash cam video starts, but it shows the trooper staying calm and continuing to look for the suspect even after backup arrives. Since voter turnout was so large today, he's still hopeful that those numbers could turn around and says at the end of the day, he just thinks it's important how many people made it to the polls. One of the great things about Narcan is it's so easy to use. Anyone can do it. Even I just learned in a few seconds, but Purdue Pharma has yet to say exactly how the new drug will be administered. The Benzie County Road Commission recently received a list from the Michigan Department of Transportation about areas within the county that may be unsafe and need improvements. Surprisingly, this intersection did not make the list. Good morning, Jessica. Yes, despite it being snowing and freezing and also seven in the morning, there is no lack of enthusiasm and excitement here from all of the Western Michigan University students here. I don't know if you can see kind of the line behind me in the crowd. Obviously, I've got these lovely people next to me, but there are hundreds of people here. These poll stations have been installed in every classroom and in the hallways here at Glen Lake. They work just like a fire alarm. Pull it down and the alarm is sounded and police will be on their way. 7 to 4's Mara Thompson was there as he walked out of the Grand Traverse County Jail. That's where she joins us now from live. Mara, did he say anything? Mark, not much other than it's been a long 20 months. This was the first time Menor stepped out of jail since his September 2016 arrest in connection with the bank robbery in Leelanau County. Come out. With nothing but the clothes on his back and a trash bag of documents, William Menor walked free for the first time in nearly two years. How does it feel to be out? Um, it feels kind of strange after being in there for 20 months. Menor recently had federal charges dropped against him for a string of bank robberies, two from the Lake Ann Honor Bank in Benzie County in 2015, and one from Leelanau County at the Huntington Bank in Empire in 2016. Right now, Menor still faces two felony taser possession charges in Grand Traverse County. True, they're felonies, but they're pretty low on the food chain as far as felonies go. Judge Haley says yeah, since sure Menor is a 70-year-old man with no prior convictions, there's no need to continue holding him on a $100,000 cash bond. I don't see any uh, federal marshal in here telling me that he's got all this great evidence of some kind of um, conspiracy or bank robbery or anything else going on here or further charges coming down the road. There's nothing. The case is being bound over to circuit court for the possession of the tasers, but Menor's attorney says he's happy with getting his client out on his own recognizance. I'm excited that he finally got out. I think that, you know, he's been in there a long time. It's been a long road to hoe, and I think we're, we're finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And as for Menor's first plans walking free. What's the first thing that you're going to do right now? Fresh um, fruit. Yeah, possibly. A couple hundred yard dashes. While Manor is only facing the two taser possession charges right now in Grand Traverse County, the Benzie County prosecutor is reviewing their case to determine if any charges will be filed there. I'm also waiting to hear back from the Leelanau County prosecutor about if any charges will be filed in that county. Reporting live in Grand Traverse County, Mara Thompson, 7 and 4 News. He was um, a terrific runner, snowboarder, skater soccer player. Michael Hurtler grew up in Traverse City, graduating from TC Central. He had friends, family, and a good job. In the last couple of months, he just seemed fine. And the week before, he told me he was happier than he had been in a long time. In September, a heroin overdose claimed Michael's life. While it wasn't easy, the Hurtler family knew it was important to talk about. Okay, this happened. What can we do to help stop it in our community? I. I don't think people realize how severe it is right here in Traverse City. They wrote about Michael's addiction in his obituary and in lieu of flowers, asked for donations in his honor to addiction treatment services. Ever since we've been working with them um, to create opportunities to, uh, to impact the community through, through, through those donations. 
Nearly $12,000 was collected, but the hurtlers weren't done giving to ATS. Weeks after Michael died, Lynn's mother passed away, who left $10,000 for Michael in her will. We just said, you know what, this is going to addiction treatment services. Um, you know, maybe they can save somebody else. And that money is being used to make about 300 kits with the reversal drug Narcan to give to those in need, which may have already saved a life. This weekend, I met a mother that, that requested a kit because she uh, used the one that she already had on her own son a couple weeks ago. Uh, and she was seeking out a place to get more and was cost prohibitive but then heard that we had some and so um, sought us out. Lynn says she's been overwhelmed by the community's support, but more still needs to be done. Everybody's valued, everybody's loved, everybody deserves another chance. Decades after giving everything to serve our country, dozens of mid-Michigan veterans had the experience of a lifetime seeing the memorials in their honor. All in about 12 hours from Grand Rapids to Washington, D.C. and back, starting with a warm welcome. Thank you to them. Our world is different because they gave, were willing to give their life and their time. For World War II veteran Stanley Switalski of Gaylord, the day had an added surprise when many family members flew in to join him. It means a lot. He doesn't go very many places, and to have him come here to the World War II uh, memorial is pretty cool. It's very cool. For all, it was emotional in its own ways. Uh, I've, I've seen this before, but this is something special. I've, I've got my son here with me now. From the wall at the Vietnam War Memorial. They gave it all. Well, I, I just gave my service. I know it was necessary, but I'm not jealous of them. But, uh, I feel I'm not worthy to be considered with them. To the changing of the guards at Arlington National Cemetery. It was a day of healing for the veterans. The people in there as you go by, they shake your hand and thank you for your service. And it's been kind of emotional for me. A way to give our gratitude. Very rewarding to know that somebody really thought something of what we did. For years and years, I'd meet people on the street and they wouldn't say anything to me at all, even though I was still wearing my cap. But now I've had people come in a restaurant and search for me and buy my lunch. And Thank you for your service. You're welcome. And a day they say they'll never forget. It's beyond my imagination. Beyond my imagination. <laughs>